When I was 10 years old, I was scared of everything. One day, uh, my dad was hunting, and he drove me up to the property above my grandparents' house, and he dropped me off so I could drive deer for him. I didn't... Well, I didn't really see the point of what I was doing because I was just walking around the woods. Pushing deer around, making noise. Literally just walking around the woods making noise. Um, because I was not gonna hold a gun. And I could not sit still for very long. Unfortunately for me, I really don't have any sense of direction. So he, he drops me off at, at the edge of the woods. And he goes, and, and he goes to hunt and find his hunting spot a few miles away. And my goal for the next few hours is just to walk around the woods. It takes me 15 minutes to get lost out of my mind. I have no idea where I am. I have no idea what direction I came from, what direction I'm supposed to go. Um, and I just stand there in the middle of the woods for a good long while. And <laughs> Then anxiety starts to set in. I had a flip phone that was almost dead. And that was it. And, and I remember puking and freaking out. And I started walking and jogging some of the time. I had no service. When you're totally lost like that, <laughs> you're scrambling around and you're like, Ooh, should I get to it? Do I need to find water? Where's the high ground? Like, should I just stay put so my dad can come and find me? Should I keep looking to find my dad? What am I going to do? And at 10 years old, these anxieties are quadrupled from what they would be now. Eventually, I found my way out of the woods. I came upon a huge property, and I was able to get service and walk across this giant yard. Hoping that nobody saw me, I probably looked very, very weird in an oversized hoodie, baggy pants, and boots, and just meandering around five hours after I was supposed to be done driving deer for him. They found me. And so I didn't really like going outside much after that. There was a long period of my life where I didn't spend much time outside. But then I kind of got obsessed with Bigfoot. <laughs> Yeah.
I'm believing that the further I get into West Virginia, the more and more I'm gonna believe that something like that actually does exist. Uh, I think that those lights are somebody else coming down here, and I am officially incredibly terrified right now. So I'm gonna just sleep in my car with the doors locked. And I have no internet and I have no data, which I expected. I'm at like the bottom of a gorge. This is not ideal. No.
sure if this is compelling drama, but my car won't start. Um, Just get lost in the woods. What is wrong with me? This is not good. This is uh, not good at all. I don't. <laughs> it happened again. Camera. Phone dead. Seven and a half hours away from a single person I knew. And in the middle of a quarantine. Top three most isolating experiences of my entire life. I've been thinking about the question of why I'm still out here a lot today. There's a lot of fear, there's a lot of worry that like borders are gonna start shutting down. Um, my phone can't keep a charge, my camera uh, just seems to be doing better now. Data's been in and out. It's been almost safety risks some of the times, you know, getting lost in the woods and stuff like that. Uh, my car didn't start today. And now, my, uh, my tent is leaking. my birthday and it was nice so far it's been a great birthday probably my favorite birthday I've had ever <laughs> the tent was freezing by the morning <laughs> it was dripping water on me uh, but I did make some very intense coffee and some very surprisingly good eggs this has been the best social isolation that I can imagine. <laughs> wow, Bigfoot. Just wow. <laughs> <laughs> 